Right, I'm sure you all have gone through that, right? So much of a disruption. Amazing uh, presentation, Rajiv. Uh, Eye-opener, I would say. All of, almost all of you. You know, in my business, but suddenly I realized it's not scary. Actually, it's an opportunity for all of us sitting here today. It's a big, big opportunity, and that's my story. Uh, every time I did something was um, something good was when my business got disrupted. Every time it happened. In my journey as an entrepreneur, I started around very young, uh, um, and uh, about 18, 19, I had my first company. And I've built about eight, nine companies so far. The ninth one in AI space is starting out. And uh, um, every time my business got disrupted, I come up with an idea which did 10 times bigger. And uh, uh, even though scary it may look like, I see a huge opportunity for all of you. All of you need to think of it as a, a lifetime opportunity for you. When there is so much of disruption, it requires entrepreneurs to uh, kind of uh, capitalize on that. So I would leave you guys with that thought. But before I go into the presentation, I don't have much, many slides or anything. Um, so it's building a company of 1,000 crores, uh, uh, it's, there are many things to discuss. We can go on for days, you know. There are, uh, so, but I would like to understand from you guys uh, what could be the most interesting things uh, that I can talk to you in the next few minutes with you guys. Uh, are you guys, how many of you are entrepreneurs here? Oh, wow, awesome. And uh, how many of you are in the first three-year phase and uh, at the very beginning phase, like in the idea stage? And how many of you are been there in the business and uh, done it to a certain level and looking for to the scale? It's a pretty mix, so I think uh, in, in, the, in a few minutes you need to cover all of them, maybe. But before we go, I spend a few minutes, a couple of minutes on the... You know, I was born in a small town about 50 kilometers from here. Went to, I studied Telugu medium, went to local uh, school, which was like three-room school, you know, pretty basic. Uh, for those of you who have been to government schools, it's, it's kind of one of them. And I started my first company when I was 19. We did some small development of uh, apps, software apps, and you know, very, very tiny bay. If I look at my life, you know, graph it, or it'll be like this. First up was, uh, first four or five years, I established uh, one of the first internet services company here called Pioneer, and uh, sold almost 90% of my capacity even before the launch. Thought I was doing great, and then, I launched another product uh, in the related area called Aladdin. Again, the same, 90% market share in the space. Uh, it's a kind of a ERP suit for telecom and internet service companies, which I built while doing the first company. And uh, recognition when I was very young, and uh, uh, you know, media industry, so I was, I was a keynote uh, um, when I was 23, 24, and uh, recognized in the city as, a, as the entrepreneur, uh, the, the tech entrepreneur in, in those days and stuff like that. You know, success got into my head. I thought, this is it, right? You know, uh, and <clears throat> things have changed suddenly. Uh, after the dot-com, e-commerce meltdowns, uh, free internet services companies have come. I was, so obviously the, all the revenues have become zero. Near zero, I would say. Yeah, there are still some customers. And um, uh, pretty much uh, every month I was searching for money to pay my employees. Um, I have uh, depleted all my uh, cash flows, uh, all my 
bank balances, even my credit cards to, to you know, pay the bills at the end of the month. Literally, I became, uh, you know, the next moment was complete bankrupt. Uh, and uh, I, at first, I refused to accept it, that uh, this could happen. It took, my close friends used to walk with me at that time, and they used to tell me, see that it's done, over. Right, move on, pick up a job, uh, or this is, this is dead. I refused to accept for a few months. And uh, slowly that realization sank into me. And uh, of course then, once, once, once that reality s sinks in, I think the real entrepreneur again, that's what I call it as a big disruption, which happened in my life. Um, those days, if any one of you looked at me, um, you know, to, to give you the example, uh, a few years ago, uh, two years ago, a, one of, a visitor walked into my office and she there, ten years ago, I met your father and uh, I told him, no, you met me. So that's how my state was, um, completely disrupted physically, mentally, emotionally. And then, then, Tier 4 data center is pretty much full. We have one more in, uh, uh, in Gachibali now. And, uh, and that then we built our second one in Bombay. Uh, this became the biggest Tier 4 in Asia five years ago, six years ago when we built it. Right now we're beating it. We've built another one there. Overall, right now we have about uh, six data centers. And as we speak, we are planning 12 more data centers. Basically, we are planning campuses now um, in both Bombay and uh, Hyderabad. And then I started one more company. Of course, there were several disruptions within Control S, right? You know, the slowdowns happened in 2008, 9. Immediately after we started, again, this big hit. Uh, <clears throat> so we, were, we built the company only for kind of a very, very large enterprises, so Fortune 100, India's top 100, banks, etc. And the slowdown hit CapEx uh, of all these companies froze. And we became, again, uh, pretty big unforeseen circumstances. We changed the business model again, and so on and so forth, yeah. And then I started one more company uh, to focus on the cloud wave again. The whole world said, uh, this is another example of disruption. When the hyperscale companies have come, uh, the Amazon, AWS, and Google, and Azure, and Alibaba, Tencent, the mightiest companies of the world are in the cloud business. And uh, that's the time I started my cloud venture about four or five years ago. And people said again, Sridhar, you're going to go for a suicide attempt. Yes, uh, all the cloud players business uh, in India got disrupted completely. CP, NetMagic, Tata.com, everyone's business got disrupted. Their volume shrunk or they didn't grow at all during the last five years. Whereas in the last five years, we were at, uh, five years ago, we were a 10 crore company. Right now we built, this is my fastest growing company, uh, not as fast as the unicorns that you've shown, Raji, but uh, yeah, we've built a $100 million uh, recurring revenue uh, company in, in less than about four years. And right now we operate in about 21 countries uh, across the world. So between these two, we are, our current run rate has crossed about 1,200 crores with a healthy EBITDA close to 50%. Um, so I found opportunities in the, in the cloud space as well. There are many things that these big guys can't do. That's what we are focused on. And also on top of them, we actually work with them to provide um, a layer of services on top of them. Overall, this has been, and we are gunning for a billion dollar enterprise soon, hopefully by 23. But the numbers don't, I mean, top line is not my key criteria of building a company. My key criteria of building a company is uh, uh, a sustainable uh, organization 
with a clear vision and a company which adds value to its customers, solves business problems. So with this, I stop. We have a few more minutes. Uh, I think the idea um, has to be the business, the space that you are in, um, has to first solve the, a problem and uh, solve an industry problem, number one. Number two, so the idea itself is the biggest uh, and the strategic uh, positioning it takes in that industry. I think that's the key. If you get it wrong, uh, you know, by a few degrees here or there, you know, you would, instead of being a $10 billion company, you could be a, you know, $10 million company. You know, that big difference to begin with. And after that, of course, the, uh, how you build the company team, how do you scale it, how do you finance it, and uh, most important is, uh, that's what I do, how do you gain those insights that you are able to see what's going to happen in the next one, two, five years. Uh, I think that's the key insight an entrepreneur needs to develop over, you know, over by sheer his hard work or observation of the industry, research. You know, uh, we all need to develop that insights into our industry. No analyst report, uh, and no management consultant, uh, none of the McKinsey's <coughs> can give that uh, insight. Uh, they will give, um, most of them will give you uh, what's, uh, what happened or what's happening. They're not going to be able to predict. That's the entrepreneur has to do it. I think that's the key um, uh, thing that one needs to develop. And another one which worked for me very well is uh, uh, connecting the dots. I started a data center company because internet bandwidth prices were crashing. Unrelated activity. Uh, internet prices used to be, you know, two crores to they crashed to some few cents. Uh, and fiber reaching everyone's home. Then suddenly I realized that the data centers need not be website hosting companies. Data centers can be uh, enterprise, uh, you know, what's happening now. The cloud is the same uh, and the co-location business is the same, right? You know, they can, they can be run from massive buildings. They need not be run from independent, you know, depending in the ecosystem. And uh, then suddenly beautiful opportunities come about uh, uh, in, that, in that space. When the cloud business was happening, I saw that this, all these hyperscales are only in four or five locations worldwide. What about those 40, 50 countries? Whereas the cloud as a concept has been sold in all those countries. But who is there to serve them? On a global scale, who could give them that kind of a quality of service? That's the opportunity, simple opportunity I saw. And then, yes, first mover, I didn't have to even put my sales guys there. I don't have sales people, I just have some one or two relationship people per continent. Uh, that's it. And uh, it's all, uh, you know, clients pulling us rather than um, we trying and going to sell them. Just the idea, right? Uh, so that's the interesting phase that we are in of a major disruption happening across across the industry verticals. Rajiv was right, you know, if there is no digital, there is no business. Uh, and that's an amazing opportunity. It's a life, I don't think our previous generation has that kind of an opportunity. So, Thank think you. about it. Yeah.